Welcome to Family Watch, where we bring you meaningful Catholic conversations on marriage, parenting, and family culture. Ako si Manjo Mendoza ng Edu Child Foundation. At Family Watch, we believe that the path to the renewal of society and transformation of the church begins in and through the family by strengthening marriages, empowering parents, and bringing families closer to Christ. Welcome to episode 42. Maybe you clicked on this episode out of curiosity, no? Kasi parang ang title namin ay parang Korean novella. So sino po yung two brides? So please stay on and find out. Kasi pag binasa, ngayon pag binasa ko yung CV ng ating guest, ay mapepreempt na yung ating usapan. So allow me to introduce our Shrine Rector and Parish Administrator of the Diocese and Shrine and Parish of our Lady of the Abandoned Marikina. Welcome to Family Watch, Father Lambert Ramos, and belated happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Manjo, and thank you for inviting me. Father, ano po yung, ano, ano po yung sinasakop ng uh, role ninyo ngayon bilang Shrine Rector and Parish Administrator? Because for many people, hindi po ganun kalinaw yung trabaho <laughs> So for our education also. Uh, in, a, in a diocesan shrine in a parish where uh, there is a resident bishop, the bishop is uh, the parish priest. But for all intents and purposes, the administrator, the parish administrator, does all the work, so to speak. So he, he runs the show. The bishop is the pastor. Ultimately, anything and everything that needs to be lifted up to the bishop must be done because he continues to be the parish priest. But the pastor, the administrator, administers the parish and also acts as the shrine rector. I see. I see. Mm. Okay. Father, parang simula nung bata pa lang kayo, parang taong simbahan na kayo, no? You were sacristan at age 10. And then in high school, you entered yung minor seminary. So, um, ano po yung nagtulak sa inyo para pumasok sa seminary ng ganong kaaga? Uh, let, let me put it this way. At birth, I was dedicated to the first woman of my life, Blessed Virgin Mary by the second love of my life, by my mother. So you can say that my vocation may have been triggered or may have been conditioned by my mother, my second woman. Wow. Yeah. So, eh, totoo naman yun, di ba? Sa, ang mga magulang, ang, 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 yung role talaga nila sa paggabay sa mga anak nandun eh. Well, especially the mothers. Uh, all mothers, I don't believe there is any, any exception to that, wish to have a priest son. Totoo yan. <laughs> Totoo po yan. So, Father, ano po yung, ano yung experience niya sa minor seminary? May discernment process pa yun para kung tutuloy ka sa major seminary? Kasi di ba, nag, nag San Carlos ka right after? Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, Minor seminary is its its major aim is to prepare minor seminarians to enter the major seminary. In ang major aim yan, no ifs and buts. And generally, mortality mortality rate is very high. I mean, out of we started thirty three first year high school, uh-huh. we graduated fourteen, and out of the original thirty three, there were only I think seven of us uh, who entered the major seminary. Oh. And out of this, only one became a priest. Wow. Of the Papa, 33 ano. that started, humabul lang ako. Ano na ako, yung kuling biyahe na. Because at age 63, I was studying for theology and wanting to become a priest. So, kaya yung kanyang paging the only uh, priest who became who became priests out of our originals, nasira akong bigla. Dati nag-iisa lang siya. Ngayon, dalawa na. Ngayon, dalawa na. <laughs> Pada, so, Pada, may so, interesting episode sa buhay niyo, di ba? Uh, well, you graduated San Carlos Major Seminary with Latin honors. Tama po ba? 
Uh, well, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And, right. and then you add, nag regency kayo, no? Okay, Ex ganito ulit for our education. Ano ba yung regency? Okay. <clears throat> I was I I completed uh, philosophy at San Carlos at age 19. I was in the seminary at age 11. And kasi sa Malolos Bulacan uso pa noon yung accelerated eh. May from grade 4 na, na accelerated mga ganun ba kaya 11 pa lang. 11 I was first year high school. I graduated at 19 years old. So my spiritual director said this is not correct. You've got to learn what it is that you are giving up. So, 19 years old, and you expect to go to theology? Get out of my sight, sabi niya sa akin. You teach. So, so, my spiritual director, who was also my philosophy yeah. professor, who perhaps had the confidence in my, my philosophy, sent me to the College of the Holy Spirit. So, your agency is teaching? For, in After your case, you, see, you can do anything. Ah. Meaning, you just have to be out of the seminary, out of the clutches of your ah. superiors. Forget about the, the things that you used to do. Just learn how to live outside. Learn how it is to be a layman. I chose to, to teach in college at the College okay. of the Holy Spirit. Yon ang oh. may, yun nga po, may interesting life event kayo ng Regency, di ba? Pwede niyo ba ikwento yun? Yeah, okay. I, I, I taught philosophy. And then I continued pursuing a master's degree in philosophy at Ateneo. While I was teaching uh, the fourth year uh, college students, I saw a lady who was so peacefully listening to me at the back while everybody was all agog trying to, to get my attention. This, this, this girl was not even paying attention to me. She was just... I said, this, this is different. So I, I asked around. Then I said, that is the woman I'm going to marry. <laughs> In other words, there you go. There you go, my vocation. Uh, after a couple of years of, 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 of teaching, I saw somebody who I thought I was willing to give up my vocation in her favor. But please, Manjo, Mark, please note, I did not support her during her studies. That would be unethical. Yeah. yeah. So uh -huh. I left. So when she graduated from the college, immediately thereafter, on the following day, I went to her house and I believe you, you know her. Yeah. She was the eldest daughter of your mayor, of Mayor Minding yeah. Marikina. Of Minding de Guzman of Marikina. <laughs> yeah. Father, in yan, tatanong ko susunod. Ano naman ang reaction ng pamilya ni Mayor nung nalaman niya na ex-seminarian yung naliligaw, eventually naging boyfriend nung kanilang anak. <laughs> Parang nakakaya. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. I believe, you know, we Bulacanios, we know how to do this. Ang una naming liligawan yung mga nanay, mga lola. So, huli ko na agad ang loob nila. Dinadala ko sila ng mga mga sitsarong, mga pastillas, mga isimado malolos, at lahat ng mga delicacies ng Bulacan. And si Mayor naman eh, isa lang ang tanong eh, baka may asawa na yan, baka lulukuhin ka lang yan, panganay kita, blah, 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 blah. But uh, to be fair to the Mayor, he didn't care so long as the person porting his daughter was a good family background, good Catholic upbringing, yeah, yeah. ensuring that he doesn't, he didn't even uh, 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 ask anything about the economic conditions. Um, yeah. In fact, meron na kung kukwento ng ano eh, nung, nung, do we have enough time? Well, Sige po, go ahead. <laughs> well, this is something that I, 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 I love to, to tell. <clears throat> so we decided Si Bilma and I, that's her name, where we were going to get married. So I was only 24, she was 25, as matanda pa siya sa akin. So, isang gabi, sabi ko, inintay namin si Mayor. Si Mayor, pwede po bang kasapin kayo? Sure, binuksan lahat ang mga aranyas, mga kapatid ni Bilma, nanunood sa, nanunood. At si siya, siya unang unang mag-aasabi. <laughs> sabi ko, Mayor, napag- Kasundoan po namin. 
na magpakasal na eh maaari po idaling po ang aking mga magulang sa inyo. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, nasa edad na kayo. Na alam nyo na ang gagawin nyo. Mayor, pagkaumanihin nyo na po. Ang pamilya po namin eh, pamilya lang po ng manginisda. Ah, walang ibig sabihin niya. Bago ako naging mayor, ako eh, pulis, pulis Manila. Teka, teka po mayor. Hindi po niyo po, ano, hindi, hindi po po ako tapos. Mangingis lang nga lang po ang aking ama. Pero isang, isang daang hektarya lang naman po ang aming palaisdaan. <laughs> ang dama ni mayor, I like your sense of humor. So from then on, magkaibigan na kami. So, Really, it was, you know, getting married in, in our time, when you are 25 years old, matandang dalaga ka na noon. Kailangan oh, din, oh. Eh, ano, mga, eh, 1975 yan eh. Kaya, Pare, ang bilis din ng courtship ninyo, hindi po ba? In courtship period, parang um, between courtship and the wedding, parang ang bilis. Uh, up to marriage, no. I, I courted her in 1973, but we got married in 1975. So that's... Okay. Still two years. There was even uh, what uh, you'd call a crisis. In between, I was able to get a scholarship at uh, East West Center, University of Hawaii, for another master's degree in sociology. So, na nagpapaalam na ako, sabi sabi ko kay Vilma, I want to pursue this. Ah, that would be different. If if that is the case, then let's let's stop this, and then if we if we are meant for each other. Then, yeah. please come back and then we'll... So that was the time when I said, no, 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 no. I have to think things through. Am I able to give up this woman? And my conclusion was that, no. I am going to be, she's going to be the mother of my children. Yeah. So y- I, yung isa pa pong decision na ginawa niya, hindi po ba yung na hindi na magtrabaho si Vilma? Yeah. Hindi ba... Hindi ba Di ba nang hinahiyang si na mayor sabi niya pinaaral ko to sa Holy Spirit ng ng banking and finance tapos mag housewife you know? <laughs> Well thankfully uh, I was I was looking at that uh, particular question now that you're saying it thankfully uh, Bilma's mind is of the same thing thinking as mine huh. So she was prepared to be a housewife, a homemaker, and may I tell you, Manjo, and I can tell this to all of our, of our listeners right now, if husband and wife, if the husband can very well afford, there is no substitute to the wife and the mother yeah. staying at home and taking care I agree. of the children. So I agree. Really, just I was prepared to, to plan on and to be the, the sole provider and thankfully, uh, I mean, the three children went through life with an attending mother from the time that they sleep to the time they wake up to the time that they'll be brought to school. She was their driver to, to, to the schools. Nandiyan tayo sa usaping family life, Father. Can you tell us about your, your hopes and dreams nyo as a family and then how you fulfilled your role as a provider. Kasi nakita, nakita ko yung CV ninyo, pero ang, ang dami po ninyong um, positions na you were top career executive. No? Hindi ba magiging balakid yung trabaho sa family life? O paano nyo binalansa yun? Well, I'll put it this way. I always see pursuing a career or earning a living as a tool. In other words, it is not the end in itself. So, providing for one, one's family the economic uh, conditions that I need to, to achieve, these are there in pursuit of ensuring what I promise to Bilma, I will be with you forever and I will be your provider. And when I put the RA on your hands, I meant it. So, so in other words, and and the promises that we made to each other that uh, we will make sure that the children will be 
raised properly, educated well in the best schools uh, possible, and ensuring that uh, the children must learn how to live and love and care for each other, not by way I talk to them, but by the way we live. Yeah. May I thankfully tell the Lord, thank you, Lord, I fulfill this promise up to the bed, to, 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 up to the very end. So in ang aking, uh, I can honestly say. So these children are, are all well placed in their in, in all their chosen professions. And and to me, uh, uh, the best compliment that I get was from my own daughter. I, I said, listen, you, Anna Cristina, she, she, she was, <laughs> quote unquote, my most impertinent uh, daughter. She yung, uh, my two boys will ask her to, to be the spokesman if they need something from me. So, ganun, 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 ganun. Sabi ko, iha, there is one thing I'm going to ask of you. I don't care whether ang mapa pangasawa mo is not as rich as. Of course, it will help if, 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 if uh, he has all the necessary things in life. The only thing that I want to find out is whether this man of your life loves his mother. Yeah. yeah. Pops, you need not tell me that. So why? My mother is a very happy woman. She was still alive when, when, when I was yeah, talking. Yeah. My mother is a very happy wife because I saw you loving your own mother. And this translates to loving my mother. So yeah. you need not tell me. That's, that's, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the most effective catechesis, Father, hindi ba? Hindi na yung binabasa, yung nakikita mo, isinasabuhay ng sarili mong magulang, is exactly. more effective than any reading or any yeah. lecture. Hindi ba? That's correct. You know, fast, ano, mag-fast forward tayong konti. So there was a turning point in your marriage um, in 2007. You, how did it affect your family life and your career decisions? Uh, like you even turned down a prestigious position like PBA commissioners. Nasaan kayo dito? Nasa Alaska kayo, Father? No. Uh, in 2007, I was president of Nextel. Ah, okay. It's uh, a push to talk uh, uh, Wireless telecommunication. Yeah, it's a number so one in the That was the time you were offered a position. You were considered to be to, as yeah. a PBA commissioner. So, but it was there was a, something that happened. So, can you tell us yeah. about it? There was an election among PBA owners. There were nine of them. I got five votes. Oh. So, that is majority. But the constitution says they needed, or I needed two thirds. Therefore, I needed one vote. So we were getting ready to, to look for that vote to make me the PBA commissioner. But on the very day, when there will be another election, Sibirma was complaining the, the previous night. So we went to the hospital and we had, it. she had what, uh, what do you call that? A colonoscopy. And then, the, uh, we, we, we found out that she had cancer of the colon. Ano stage na po nun, Father? Hindi, hindi, hindi ko pa alam nun, but it was serious according to, because, uh -huh. you know, stage something, they can only be done through, uh, there is another uh, thing that they needed to do. Yeah. But the doctor wanted, no, no more, I will, I will not allow you to get out of this hospital. She has to be operated on. So it has to be that they have to cut. So in other words, I made a quick decision. I told myself, I have promised for better or for worse in sickness and in health. So I dropped everything. I called PBA. I called Chito Salud, my uh, friendly competitor. I told Chito Salud, Chito, the commissionership is yours for the taking. I am not able to give up I have to attend to my uh, wife in and out. 
So in, in other words, over three years, we were in and out and I shielded my children from, 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 from taking care or for worrying about their mother. And I'll tell you, attending to a sick person can be more difficult than the person experiencing the same that the, the sickness. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I, I made sure, I made sure that she, she's properly attended to. From yeah. the financial considerations to the more difficult things, which was the psychological, the spiritual foundation. I'm just so thankful that I married a, a, a sainted or a saintly wife. Because during all her years of in and out of the hospital, I saw her praying for people who were sick except herself. Yeah. She was praying more for others than herself. So really, that uh, spiritual director of mine, Monsignor Rico Santos, every time he would come, uh, I mean, he would come and visit her. Lambert, you are such a lucky guy, you. Bakit ganyan ka lahat ng pagmamahal ng Diyos na nasa iyo na? But, I mean, this wife of yours, she's such a saint. Sabi, sabi niya sa akin ganun. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I cannot, I cannot, uh, um, it has been 12 years. By October 28, she would have died. Uh, I mean, she, she, 12 years ago, nung mamatay siya. Hindi ba kayo, Hindi niyo ba kinwestiyon si Lord? Sabi niya, bakit? Lord, bakit mo hinaya ang mangyari to kay Vilma? I did. I did. I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, abnormal. I was, I was questioning him. Why? 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 And so there was a, it was a two year, it was a two year battle with cancer. Tama ba? Three. Almost three, three years. Well, 2008, 2007. Yeah, the uh, almost uh, one half of 2007 and the whole of 2008. And then she died, she died in 2009. So maybe more than two years, more than two years in and out of the hospital. Uh, but it, pong share yung ano, I, I know it's so personal, but I've been reading about it. So you can share the, the dialogue that transpired between you and si Vilma. So that bed. Yeah, I, I think I can I can do that now because uh, years ago I couldn't say that. But you know, especially during uh, um, uh, issues about marital relations and the like, and then when people ask me uh, what brought you to this, well, I said uh, there was a trigger. The night before she died, uh, my three children went out for coffee. But you know, these, these three children of mine, they, they were so sensitive. I, I thought that they realized that I needed a private time with their mother. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. left. So I seized the opportunity. I took hold of her hand and I, I uh, told her, by the way, she was no longer hearing or seeing anything of the like. I believe that is what they call Nagihinga Luna. Yeah. So she, she had a private room but it is a private ICU room. Mm -hmm. So, kung, kung ano, ano nang uh, nakalagay sa kanya, parang Christmas tree. So yeah. I took hold of her hand and I told her, please forgive me. I forgive you. Thank you. And I love you. And then I said, I'm sorry that I was not able to give you all the wealth that I promised you. So when she heard that, I just saw the twinkle in her eye, a smile uh, I saw in her eye, then removed what is covering her mouth and told me, Lambert, if you become a priest, that is all the wealth that I wish. Wow. The following day, she died. So at the time that she said that, I was speechless and I couldn't answer. First of all, I'm afraid. I was so afraid. If I say yes and I, I didn't become, so uh, I will, 
I, it will be difficult for me to forgive myself. I do not want to make a promise that I cannot fulfill at that day. So, so Father, between yung time po, sorry, uh, between the time in Vilma's death and the time that you entered Loyola School of Theology, it's like five years. Yeah. So, para, yeah. Ano po yun, para kayong tinimbang nyo limang taon? In fact, in two years' time, I was I became antisocial. I became a social, so to speak. I was I was not paying attention. Thankfully, uh, financially, I, I although I uh, it was a very heavy burden to carry the hospitalization, the like. But meron pa namang natitira. So kahit hindi po na ako magtrabaho. So I I was bumming around. I was playing golf every day. I was just having coffee, but hindi naman ako drinker and I don't smoke. So wala, ganun lang ako. Pero nagsawa rin ako. And then, in fact, to be honest, to be perfectly honest, nagkaroon pa nga ako ng girlfriend. And she is very pretty. I mean, a combination of Bea Alonso and Angel Oxin. Ganda niya. Medyo may edad na nga lang. Siyempre, matanda na naman ako. Ba't ka na makukuha na? But to be honest, I just cannot imagine myself getting married again and staying on the same bed with another woman like Bilma. Parang, parang hindi na kaya ng bigtip ko. So, so that led me to, to many, many sessions with my spiritual director and, and, and reading again, and getting back to that, that question that Bilma threw at me at her deathbed. So I said, why not? <laughs> Ayan, yun ang, uh, yun ang so, so when you decided 2014 to continue your studies, mm-hmm. um, disidido na po ba kayo time na yun? Dire-direcho, parang ito ba yung point na sinabi mo? Ito na yan, I'm, I'm going to pursue my priesthood. Yes, except that here is the difference, uh, Manjo. <clears throat> There was no guaranteed diocese that would take me. Okay. I just went to LST, Leola School of Theology, through the assistance of uh, Father Tito Kaluwag, a good friend of mine, was, was a Jesuit before, but left the Jesuit and became a secular priest. Yeah. And some other priests who I know. I went to the president, rector of Loyola School of Theology, and I said, I, I want to take up theology. If for some, by the grace of God and the workings of the Holy Spirit, uh, a diocese will accept me, then I'll, I'd like to be ordained a priest. So, fine, we'll, we'll accept you. Tapos nung makita niya, excuse me, kahit hindi ka na nga mag-aaral, pwede. <laughs> so, ang... <laughs> Ang ginawa ko na nga lang eh, I went to theology. Sometimes meron kaming uh, a person-to-person and professor. We'll have a dialogue and then he'll, he'll give me a grade. Sometimes mga required subjects, kailangan I join. Kaya natutuwa yung mga classmates ko eh. Tawag sa akin eh, si, si Tito Lampert. Tapos especially on, on uh, uh, when, when the subjects were all about marriage and family. Yeah. Ask Tito Lampert. Tito Lampert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on sexuality and all those things, uh, on uh, hearing yeah. confessions and the like, yun, kaya mandated yeah. it, mandatory yun. So, but Father, there was... Sorry. Go. Now, I wanted, I'm curious lang po, please, uh, hindi nyo nababanggit, ano po yung reaction ng mga bata, ng mga anak ninyo, nung sinabi nyo, oh, dire-direcho na ako, magpapari na ako. Anong age nila, tapos ano yung reaction? Well, 2014, 2014, uh, wait, my eldest son was born 1976. So, ilan yun? 30, you know, 40, ano na? 39. Tama? Tama ba? 38. So, may ilan na sila. The second is okay. 32. And the last is 31. I mean, they are all... So, they have their own families na? Uh, hindi, ang, ang meron lang nun eh, ano, yung panganay lang, wala pa nga siyang anak eh. Uh, But, eh, mga ibang mga bata ngayon, ayaw magsipag-asawa ng maaga. Sabi nila. Oh, so, anyway, so to answer your question, the two boys, the, the eldest son was, uh, uh, his 
reply, I, I gather them. Eh? I'm going to tell you something which I hope will not shock you. So when they heard me, wala namang masyak. Because sabi nga ng panganay, Pops, that's probably a fulfillment of my mother's dream. Yeah. Eh, yung siyang, siyang closest. Six years siya bago nasundan eh. Uh-huh. Okay. Si uh, the second son, sabi niya, Pops, I'm neither here nor there. If that will make you happy, go right ahead. I will never stand in your way. Sabi sa akin. What's it, Christine? Son. So, you know, so wow. then what the daughter was 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 very uh, very straightforward. Sabi niya sa kay pops, thanks be to God. To be honest with you, we don't know what to do with you. <laughs> so, and that's it. Siguro sa nais sila na ang kanilang ang mga matatanda eh, they would take care. But the, their father is such healthy, financially independent. Walang ano. Yeah. Hindi hindi naman ako dependent sa any one of my children eh. So yeah. really walang wala akong makita in fact when I got ordained I think they were they were the happiest people on earth. So so talaga nga diyan. It's so, uh, an- ano pong tawag sa inyo ng inyong mga anak ngayon at manugang? Well, they continue to call me pops in um, sa ano na pagka kami-kami lang. Hindi ba Pero, nalilito po yung mga apo niyo? Hindi, <laughs> isa lang yung apo ko. Di, three years ah. pa lang eh. Eh ah. siya, ang tawag niya sa akin, nakikipops na rin siya sa <laughs> kanilang daddy niya. But in front of other people, si, si Father Pops. <laughs> Father Pops, okay. <laughs> Father, um, you mentioned in a previous interview that you may not have the strength and energy to serve as a parish priest. And yet, last September 17th, you were officially installed as our parish Shrine Rector and Parish Administrator. Mm-hmm. Ano po ang nagpabago ng inyong kalooban? Bishop Francis de Leon sent me to Rome to study church management. I was going to write a uh, dissertation, Effectiveness and Efficiencies in Running a Paris and a Diocese. So Bishop Francis was telling me, Okay, you have had so much experiences in business management, running companies around the world, but not the, 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 the church environment. So how can you even consider writing efficiencies in running a Paris without having had the experience to run a Paris? So sabi niya, perhaps now is the time for you to. Ang nakakatawa lang sa kanya, ang binigay niya sa akin, it's not a small Paris. It is the second biggest yeah. parish of the diocese next to Antipolo. Yeah. So yeah. it's okay. I, I love this place. I mean, who would have thought? Yeah. And that... Marikina loves you also. No, <laughs> I hope so. But Sibilma was born here, was yeah. baptized here. Yeah. Pagkatapos, kanina ng hapon na si Mayor Marcy was uh, uh, visiting us because I was blessing the statue of St. Michael, priest of St. Michael today. Yes. So, Happy uh, Feast Day. Kapwentuhan nga kami eh. So magkakamag-anak daw ang mga, mga in-laws ko tsaka siya. So, sabi niya, thank you. We, we, we like you here. Sabi niya, sabi niya, nakatuwa naman naman. Moving forward, Father. Hmm. There has been clamor for optional celibacy for priests. Hmm. Well, that may not happen sa, pan- sa lifetime natin. Hmm. Is it possible, in your opinion, is it possible for a married priest with children to discharge his duties effectively as a pastor? Yes. That has been my... Uh, that was the, the, uh, the major, uh, uh, the major um, topic when I was interviewed by Crooks now. Huh. This, is, this is my position. <clears throat> I think that it is best for our church to consider um, um, ordaining married people who have had successes in their various professions, various careers, whose children are already well-placed. Naturally, they, they, they needed to be vetted, so to speak, because yes. it would be difficult for one whose children have problems in drugs or having some uh, or sex offenders or whatever. In other words, the... Right. 
I mean, that, to me, but, one who has no financial worries, yes, one yes. whose wife perhaps is doing all kinds of social and religious work, one who has enough time to attend to uh, various issues and concerns of the parish, one who will not worry about where to get the next meal or how, yeah. where to get the, the money to send this, the children to school. This would be ideal. I am seeing it right now. I'm not having any of those domestic issues. So I can spend most of the time uh, over here. So, but you know, kasi seli basi manjo, this is this is also a calling. So uh, what I'm saying is this: one cannot be forced into it. But if that being the case, and you understand that this is a requirement of being a priest, the Australians have a very clear saying: if you cannot stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Yeah. Pipilitin mo maging pare, hindi yeah. mo naman kanyang uh, hindi mag-asawa. Excuse me. I mean, you cannot have both. You cannot have your cake and eat it too. Correct. So, right. Kasi, Manjo, why am I saying this? About, about a couple of weeks ago, my elder son, who is very capable, of course, and already uh, in his 40s, got sick. I got troubled. Despite the fact that he is old, he could take care of, of himself. Yes. Can you imagine a father worrying about a son? Can you imagine if that is happening during the early days of your marital life? Eh, and damning issues and concerns and anxieties of running a Paris. So uh, uh, uh. those are really practical issues. Yeah. And, uh, and, and to me, the worst is this. At night, husband and wife can never avoid having pillow talk. Yeah. Diba? I mean, naku. Ito yun si, si pare, merong asawa. Pinag-uusapan na pala yung mga sikreto na simpahan. Yeah. Ito namang as, asawa kahit without meaning it. Uy, ganito pala yung isang pare doon. Uy, ito. Those are practical things. Those are things yeah. that are not uh, shared. Kung wala kang uh, asawa, I'm talking from the most practical point of view. Although, strictly speaking, there is nothing in the scriptures that require that requires a priest to be unmarried. But my sense is that it's definitely practical and cultural. So, so Kung po pwede lang, every, ang pinaka best, best condition is what happened to me. I am a widower. Strictly speaking, binatang binata, di ba? <laughs> Children grown up, no yeah. concerns. Oh, ayan. Then I wait for, my, for the time that the Lord will also take me. So, but in the meantime, I have enough time to serve God through His church. Kung hindi, ay naku, ang daming mga married people, very well capable, who are very much in love with their wife and, their, and the church who can serve. So to me, yeah, that's they true. must be given a real good chance. Yan ang aking position. Father, um, we're, we're very close to, to, to the end of our interview. So may I ask you for your final message for our viewers? Okay. Um, you know, in the past, I am a very disciplined person because of my, of my uh, background as a business executive. So I always deal with people through my head. The discipline, the rigor, the blah, 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 blah. Now, when I uh, become a priest, I believe I must now deviate from too much using my head, I must now try to follow what Benedict XVI once said. And these are very simple words. Cor ad cor loquitur. The heart 
speaks to the heart. And where the heart leads you, sees it. Carpe diem. Wag mo nang payagan. It may just pass you by. There will be no more, no more chance. So, for example, me in the twilight years of my life, the Holy Spirit with His sense of humor said, "Hey, Lambert, you still have some time. Use that for the good of the church. Do it. Carpe diem. Sis it." So, so yun. Kaya ngayon now, I am going to make sure that the remaining years of my life. I use my heart. Okay. Why? And Because really. you know, following a favorite professor of mine, si Father Gerald de Castiger, isa lang ang nakalagay sa kanyang sa kanyang room na puro libro. Sabi niya, crudely written, my life is meant to share, and my heart is meant to care. Wow! So beautiful. So, thank you very much, Father, for your beautiful sharing. So, dear viewers, Father Lambert's story tells us that holy matrimony and the consecrated life are not polar opposites. So, it's the same God-given love that animates and sanctifies marriage and the priestly service. After all, Saint Paul says in Ephesians chapter five, the love of a husband for his wife is designed to mirror Christ's love for his church. Ang tanong sa atin, tumutugon ba tayo ng oo sa panawagan na magmahal araw-araw tulad ng pagmamahal ni Kristo? So Father, can you help me out? We usually end the episode with a quotation from Pope Francis um, inviting you to read our inspirational quotation from Amoris Laetitia. Yeah, that's a beautiful... Uh, thank you for asking me because it's one of those beautiful things, this Pope Francis is one of, of, of a kind, and these are beautiful words that perhaps we can draw from. Pope Francis said, the church is called to cooperate with parents through suitable pastoral initiatives, assisting them in the fulfillment of their educational mission. She must always do this by helping them to appreciate their proper role and to realize that by their reception of the sacrament of marriage, they become ministers of their children's education. In educating them, they build up the church and in so doing, they accept a God-given vocation. Thank you, Father Lambert. You, dear viewers, if you got this far, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed our video, please give us a thumbs up. For comments on how we can improve or suggestions on the topics that we want to cover, please type them in the comment box below. Please know that we read all your comments. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And see you next week. Bye!